are high spins or these ones are four spins. Okay. Yes, thank so, you. If I should summarize your question, your question um is about when the sperms are stored for a long time, what happened, isn't it? Please. Okay. Uh, sperms are protein in nature. Okay. So I hope you know that we say that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. I hope you are aware of that. Yes. Okay. That's, so sperms are proteins. Your body needs proteins for so many things. So when sperms are produced and they are there for a long time, there are two things that happen. Number one, the person gets wet, wet dreams. Wet dreams meaning that the sperm bank has been there for long and then your brain will be stimulated in the night and you dream having sex and then it overflows. That's one of it. Okay. Number two, your body will denature them and then use them for other things. Okay, so it doesn't go to waste. There's nothing like you've gotten, you, uh, you produce more. So is there, it's concentrated or it's spoiling. No, no, it doesn't happen that way. The body either, especially in adolescent age, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, that age wise, uh, it, will, it will give you wet dreams. But when you grow more or over, what it's going to do is that it's going to use it for other things. It denature them and use it for other things. So there's nothing like it's wasted. No, nothing is wasted in the body. Okay. Okay, thank you. So, so if your husband travel, let me add that one. Maybe that's where you're coming from. If your husband travel abroad and come back home, and you expect that his sperm is supposed to be thick, and he, I didn't change. The issue is that it's not like that. Okay, It's not that he has been there for long. So when it comes, the sperm should be thick or should be like that. It's not, no, it's, immune, it's not like that. Okay. It's not like that. So you midwife should advise people wise because I've met a lot of these cases. Ladies confining you, say, be man, buy and the sperm, I say, it's too light. It's too light. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah. Why are they? Okay. These things are good. Okay. So we can't even look at the. It's only when a man is sexually active and you see. Today, what we're going to do is to talk about sperms that are very thick, semen that are thick. Other semen are very mm. yellow. Others are like that. What happens? We're going to look at it. Okay. So there are problems we need to solve. If your husband's sperm or semen is like oat, very okay. thick, when ejaculates come, bam, 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 bam. Okay. These okay. are problems we need to face. Okay. And it's very thin. There's also another problem. So that's what we're going to talk about today. But if somebody travels and come and then you want to look at the, the, the way the semen is, you expect that it's supposed to be taken. That's not true. Okay. Good. Any other question? Yes, I see another hand up. Who is that? Um, uh, Faustina. Faustina, yes. Hello, sir. Please, I yeah, want Faustina. to know, apart from fertilization, what does sperm do for a woman? Hmm. Faustina. Okay, good. It nourishes the <laughs> uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't change. Okay, this is what happens. You see, I said they are proteins, okay? They are proteins. So when the body, one thing about sperm is that your immune system or your, your vagina, the journey of the, the sperm from the vagina to the ovidat, it's like when sperms are thrown into the vagina, your, your cells, your immune system, your white blood cells attack them. The first thing the vagina will do is acidic. So it will kill all the sperm cells. Okay, so as the body is killing them, it's, the vagina will be neutralized. Hence, those that will come later will not meet that leak of acid. They will make a leak of base so that they can swim through. That's the first thing. So let's ask ourselves, when the sperms are killed into the vagina, what would the vagina use them for? It will neutralize the vagina all right, and then it will be absorbed a bit to absorb through the, uh, the walls. Uh, the, 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 the endometrium, uh, the vagina epithelium has a, uh, has a ground. So actually not much is absorbed there, but when they travel into the, uh, into the uterus, 
The uterus, the endometrium of the uterus has five blood cells that will attack and kill the sperms. So those that are able to swim through the lake of fire, when they enter the uterus, the white blood cell within the uterus will attack them again and kill them. So the white blood cell use a government method in killing. And government means that they will surround it and kill it and parasite it. And then use it for their own good. Okay? So those sperms that were not able to be used or not able to kill will run their way through the, uh, the, 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 the barrier of, uh, of white blood cells or of soldiers into the ovidat. Over there, there's a resting spot a bit and will be fed and then they will continue their journey. Even there, the second aspect comes when they have to survive on their own. So if you look at the journey of the sperm from the vagina into the ovidat, they are killed and absorbed into the body. Killed and absorbed into the body. But you see, what happens during sex, hormones are released. It is this hormone, some of these hormones will be released only during sex. Okay, so it's not the sperm that are going to give you good skin and all. No, 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 it's not that one. Okay, it is the hormone that is released. Some hormones will be released only during sex. We know, we've not read the hormone yet. We're going to talk about them in female reproductive system. So I don't want to mention a lot today. But when they are released, they give you exhortation in your body, hyper sensitivity of your body, clarity of the body, and then calmness of the body. Okay, so ladies who are very sexually active actually are calm people. Those that their libido are dead, they don't feel anything. Always they are in they are, they are, they are fighting. Okay, so these are the <laughs> issues. Sex is an exercise. So when these hormones are released, things that you even feel guilty or you feel anything, you get furious. You won't even mind. Okay, you're okay. It's like the body's at rest. And it's your hope. But in a more journal. Okay. So you see, when people when ladies reach menopause, because these hormones are in balance or not there at all, then it becomes hyper, over talkative, over reactive, over this and this and this. Okay. But you at your age, if you're from rich menopause, that's why I was saying that if you have a problem with your libido, you know that you don't have affinity for sex. There's a problem. There is a problem. Let's solve it for you. Okay. If you're going to cause unnecessary tension anywhere, soup. Even meat in a soup, when you get missing, the whole house has to go to hell. You break hell because soup, uh, meat is, is lost in the soup. Where are they, Casa? Okay? But the people <laughs> break hell and all these things are there. Anything at all that is, doesn't need them to talk, they will be talking. Okay? So sex is good. When these hormones are released, they give you peace. They need to think. You see, during estasia, your muscles undergo contraction, or everything contract and relax at the same time. Hence, it's good for you. When muscles do go through this system, let's say twice a week and everything, good sex, I'm talking about good sex. It's not anything of sex, good sex. Okay, relaxes the body. And these hormones plays a vital role in the development of a female. Either thinking wise, superficial one, deeper aspect, anything at all. Okay, hypertension, then very soon it's calm. All muscles are relaxed. So it's not the sperm. Let me correct that. That I, I've learned some people are saying when they have sex or skin, a, a, a shine. It's not the sperm, please. It is the hormones that are released. So we are talking here about good sex, not just any sex, good sex. Okay. Good. Um, Jane, your hand is up. Yes, sir. I said, mm. please, I want to know the physiology behind um, blue balls. I don't know what I'm, whether I'm getting it right. When a guy complains of... Yes, yes. Maybe, uh -huh, what is, is it true? And if it's true, what's the physiology behind it? Okay. Last time, I think I did talk about blue balls. Oh, it's not this class. Okay. You see, in the epididymis, that is where we see sperm. Sperms will be matured at the head of the epididymis. They need to swing to the tail of the epididymis for storage. So mature sperm cells are in the tail of the epididymis. Okay, good. So when they move, the epididymis is like a safe house. Protect them. Have you read on the pampiniform places? Have you gone to the PowerPoint? It's all there. You see, epididymis is like a safe room. Heat does not get them. They are cool. They are fed. 
this is how they play. So when something is happening, like a man seeing a lady and then erection, uh, she, he thinks something going to happen, erection happens, you touch him, do some kissing and everything, it allows the sperm to start moving. So some of the sperms will move from their safe house, which is the tail of the epidemic, to the vast different. But if nothing happens, they can't flow, they can't swim backwards. There's no back movement. They swim forward alone. So when that happens, the body will see that or would identify that some sperms are not in the safe room, neither can they go out. So the, the idea is now is to heat the body. So the body temperature will increase. Because they are not in the safe room. So those in the safe room, that temperature, because of the company pump plants, cannot get access to them. But those outside the safe room, especially those who have moved outside of the tail of the epidemic, has to be, they'll be hurt by that heat and then they'll be denatured or they'll be killed. So that the body can clean the pathway. You are there blocking way. Okay. So this activity, elicit histamine, and histamine gives pain. So the guy is going to have severe, he's going to be feverish, one, and get severe pain, low abdominal pain and to the testes. At times, these pains are too heavy that the men, most men end in the hospital. Or they'll take their painkiller or lie down quietly without talking. They can sleep, try to sleep by force so that the pain can go. Men are not good at low abdominal pain. So when you expose a man to this type of low abdominal pain, high body temperature, histamine secretions, and then killing they are in, in trouble so my dear yes there's a problem when a man has blue ball because the, the sperms have moved from their safe house and the body will see that they block their way they are not going they are not coming so they have to do away with them so it needs to denature them okay so that's what happens and then it's not a pleasant sight for a man if you put a, a man in a in this state and then you talk to him next time he won't mind you he won't mind you oh. okay mm -hmm. So that's what happens. So be careful putting men. And then the married one are even those. Funny enough, research so that men who are married are exposed to blue balls than those who are not married. I don't get that research. I don't know how a married man will be exposed to blue ball. But that's what we are getting now. Women think that marriage is a, when you are married, is a ceiling. I've told you, men don't talk. They do act. So if you're a married woman, especially our midwives, they'll go home, I'm tired, my brother. If you're not there, but my man, home, and I'm going to go to school, I'm going to go to school, excuses here and there. Oh, there, you know, there are my excuses. Why? That's what I'm going to tell you, I'm going to go home, bye. Why? You know? So these are the issues men are facing. So blue ball, my dear, yes, there is a problem to it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. So, Jane, if you are tired, if you are a type that give men blue ball, please stop. It's not hey, good. how can I be say? I, I give it to them. Eh, it is me as at least. It is me as them to them, ba. Ah, to them, the other day. I don't want one to them. To them, not more credit. If them, my man, you didn't come on to be a to them, and look, I am, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, a young person. Come back to back. Come back to back. No problem. I give it to them, bad, yes. To them, they are not there. Have you? Now, one would tell more better with us. It's not more better, no. My man, he didn't come on at them before. You have found her. Momo, bread. I don't say, found her. you? To tell me if she's so explained, she's talking about maybe the first relationship and maybe the second. Okay. And she has never given anybody blue ball. That's what she wants to talk about. When I'm to them, I will tell you to Oh. Yes. 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 Keep going. Yes. 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 Any other question? Any other question? Yes, Mary. I think I'll I'll take two last questions and we start with yes, Hello, Mary. sir. Yes, Hello, Mary. sir. Yes, go on, uh, Mary. 
clients and the, the husband called me that uh, anytime the, uh, the partner comes and they have sex, after sex, I like the penis has to go down, but so the penis erase and uh, so the um, and it sent him at the hospital. They have to send him to keep speaking hospital. They gave him some uh, medication before the penis came down. So I want to ask what caused that. Okay, we've not talked about the it's penis yet. But let me, oh, let me let me. We've not talked about the penis because I would I was going to talk about papism. But since you brought it, let me chip something in. One, we have to look at three conditions here. Number one, is the man a skill cell person or a career? Have you checked that? Okay. Okay, so that's the first thing you have to check. If somebody is a skill cell, their career, you see, when we have blood cells infiltrating the corpus cavernosum to allow erection, because he sells, the red blood cells are not on the gush. They are time block, cause blockade, hence the veins cannot drain them and then cause constant erection. So we have to check the man in that aspect. Okay. Number two, has the man done any surgery related to inguinal region? Okay. So these are the questions you have yes. to ask. And, and number three, has the man been involved or recently got in any accident that affected the lumbar sacral region or had been treated for infection recently. Okay. So if these three questions are all no, 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 then we need to look for a direct ultrasound quickly. But if all, any of them is positive, then we need to look at it and solve it that way. We call it propism, constant erection. It doesn't really happen okay. like that. It happens in those conditions. Okay. Okay. Last question, so that at least I can start my lecture. Faustina Kwansan. Fausti, how are you? Yeah, please, I'm fine. Are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Yeah, so let me hear your question. Yeah, please, I would like to find out in a, in a week or in a month, how many times should a man uh, release? Ejaculate. Hey, Fausti. Okay, <laughs> okay, that's a good one. That's a good one. A, a man actually is always ready. A man's sperm production has no time. Every, the semi tube, one lobo can produce as many sperms as possible. So men are always ready. So there's no number of time. It depends on their affinity. But this is the case. You see, because sperms are stored in the tail of the epididymis, they need to be replaced. So if a man gets everyday sex, it means that the sperm cell that will be coming later will be mature because they are not replaced. The, the, the head of the epididymis now has to push them quickly into the tail. So for a man, at least, if you rest 24 to 48 hours, the replacement at the tail of the epididymis will be intact. So it's not that men cannot have sex always. No, but if they... The idea of sex actually has to do with reproductive system. Then it means that the man should take his time. At least it should allow the replacement of the sperm, mature sperm cells, from the head to the tail to the limits. And that will be within 24 to 48 hours. Okay? It, it varies. Some men can even go every 12 hours. Replacement is done. Others will go 48, 72 hours. So it varies. But remember, men are always ready. There's no menstrual cycle for men. So we will have a car. Mm. So if you look at what's it made of? Oh, almost so. Say, please say. I learned that. Yes, go on. Hello. Hello, I'm on there. Oh. Am I online? Yeah, yes, 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 so yes, we online. can hear you. Yes, okay, there you are. Online. Okay, so um, last Sir, thing, I said last question. Thing. Yes. Hey, okay, go on, go on. Um, you said after sex, the man should rest at least twenty-four to forty-eight hours, right? 
I want to please, know don't if... Don't miss... Don't miss... Francis Kawetu, I said... Not to rest too. Please. I'm saying that men are always ready. But for the sake, if, they assess, if the idea of the sex is for reproductive system, then replacements from the head to the tail would take something like 24 to 48 hours. And I said, even for some people, it can be 12 hours. So it's not to rest. You should know the sex the man is. Is he having sex for fun? It's for fun, yeah, fine. But if for reproductive aspect, then we need to do that. Mm, so it's not to rest, please. Hello, Say. Say. Yes. Hello. Please say. Yes. And when you, 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 mm -hmm. you kept talking of uh, having good sex, so please, I want to ask what goes into the good sex or which kind of sex can be classified as a good sex? Oh, Helen, good sex is when you, the lady, reach ecstasy. In other words, okay, you reach ecstasy. Ecstasy is when all your muscles in you contract, when you are releasing, just like men ejaculate. Ladies too do same. We call it ecstasy. So if a lady reaches ecstasy, it's that man, no matter what he does, the, the woman will support him. Okay? So good sex is when the lady reaches ecstasy and the man to ejaculate to his satisfaction. That's why we say good sex. It's not one way tried. Sex is both way winning. A lady should win, a man should win. That's why we refer to good sex, and everybody will be satisfied. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Hello, sir. Mm -hmm. So, if you're a lady and you've never reached, Hello. if you're a lady, you've never reached ecstasy, like a home bad, and you are losing like a lot. The turn of ecstasy. Hey, mommy. Let me tell you one thing. Now, with the. Hey, please. please. <laughs> I like him to teach you a bad. Okay, so this is one last question. Hello, Hello sir. So let Relax. let them come for counseling sessions oh. so that. We... Oh. Okay, please, please, please. I will. I will allow just two questions. Okay. Two questions so that we start our teaching. I think we are almost okay. We've not spent one hour yet. Uh, yes. Um, Yendo, let's hear you, and then I'll take one order, and then we will start. Okay. Mm. Hello, sir. Yes, madam. Please, please, when do we say sex is too much? When do we say what? Sex is too much. Irrelevant. Sex is too much. Yes. Oh. Sex becomes too much when one is complaining. You see, so far as you have your need and you want satisfaction, that doesn't mean you kill somebody. Okay? That's why I'm saying sex is a mutual understanding. Actually, what we call sex is not just penetrating. No. Sex is play in the mind. So if a lady to have sex, you should, these are all after the lecture. Um, if a lady you want sex, you start your game in the morning. If you are all going to work, you start it in the morning. When you come back, you continue. So that sex can be good. Okay? I always tell gentlemen that we don't jump on a lady. That you want to have sex or the hell. That's nonsense. Okay? Sex starts from the time. So you can play, fourth play, long time. Teasing and all these things. Okay? So there is nothing. When sex becomes problem or effective or detrimental to the other party, then there's a problem. No one should be complaining of sex. When one complains, it means we have to address the issue. Okay? Thank you. So if you have a problem with sex, that's where it needs to be addressed. It's no more enjoyable. It becomes pain. Some ladies take time to eat. And some men are just like, ice your time. You leave them, within five minutes, they are gone. If you are that, you should know the type of sex that you should play. Okay, that's why I was asking you that the other time that look at the position of the vase different. You can position a mind side that ejaculation will take more time. If you allow him to go Adam and Eve, oh, you are done. Everything will go quickly. So these are things you have to learn. Okay, 
And this course in reproductive system, I'm just doing a summary of the reproductive system. But it seems that your knowledge on sex and then even reproductive system itself as a midwife, I can be brave. Book the M on you. Other particular aspects, no. Hmm? So when you are doing ops and up to ops and up to many physical, who must have questions? Who must have questions? Not me to me to you. No answer why this was just to know every in our bar. Eh? Ejima or? Okay, so sex is not supposed to be painful. The last question, then we start our lecture. Uh, let's say that would be Matilda. Okay. Matilda Poku, let's hear the last question. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. sir, sir, please. Um, You said something about ecstasy, and I wanted to ask that like that. Matt, can you take your question again? I couldn't hear anything. Please, I was asking that you said something about ecstasy, and I heard not all women can have um orgasm. How true is that? Thank you. Uh, it's not that all women all women cannot have a, a orgasm, no, because some are not in the mood for sex, and then we jump on them. Okay, so. Unless people with low libido, some okay. ladies don't have libido at all. Just like, who sex as a problem? Or okay. there's nothing in her that shows that she, she's at. So, where a lady, you reach ovulation and you don't have affinity for sex, you have a problem. Ovulation is made up so that you have, you have desire for sex. So, when you reach ovulation, you don't even have desire for sex within a man. Please, that is a sign that your libido is low. Your hormones are imbalanced. We need to do something about it. So check yourself. During ovulation, do you have affinity for sex? Or do you have desire for sex? If you don't have it, then don't talk about ecstasy or orgasm. You won't even reach anywhere because you have a problem. You're going to worry somebody's man just like that. Okay. So please, let's solve the problem. It doesn't matter your age. People right from puberty have that problem, but they didn't know. So right from the day they married till now, they see sex as a problem. This is sex as a way of giving birth, and that's all. No, sex is not like that. Way of giving birth is a byproduct of sex. That's why some couples can marry and they say that we are not, we are not after kids. We have to enjoy ourselves, release our hormone, and enjoy life. But if you see sex as just an avenue for get birth giving, not enjoyable, not a listen, there's a problem. There's a problem with this little cat. Okay. That's why I told you last week that a lot of our midwives have that problem. A lot. So check yourself. Through ovulation, do you have affinity for sex? Do you have desire for sex? If you don't, please, oh, a problem. Let's solve it for you. Okay? Good. So if you have another question, you can write it, okay? So that we look at it when you close the lecture. Okay. Hey, Jennifer Fusia. I'm saying last question. Hmm? Jennifer. Jennifer. Hey. Sir, so I would like to know if a man can be allergic to his own semen. Like he, he gets a reaction, rashes, isn't it? A fever. They be asked our mom on after sex, so I would like to know. Maybe after ejaculation, Yes, please, after ejaculation. Uh -huh. and then you have that sex. We have different okay. types of sex. I hope you know that. Uh -huh. So after ejaculation, put it to work. Okay. After ejaculation. Yes. After ejaculation. After ejaculation. Some, uh -huh. so, some men can sleep the whole day after ejaculation. Okay. Some men also behave, way, behave weird after ejaculation. The issue is that ejaculation is one aspect in men that all their muscles in their body contract at the same time. That's the only way. All the muscles in the body contract at the same time, releasing a strong desire for oxytocin and everything in their body. Okay. So after that, a lot of them, most men will sleep because it's like Omaku 200 meters above. Okay. Some people on the other hand will not behave that way. They will have fever because muscles need not contract at the same time. So if those that react vigorously and you sleep, not any other thing, 
Okay, what we do is that we check two hormones. One of the hormones will be imbalanced. We balance it, it will stop. Okay, there are two hormones that will do that. We check if they are not okay, we balance it, and that will stop in that person. If not, they be a bear in the man, I mean, just sex on. Bear sex, they will not even your home. I did, I said, I mean, bear me three. So that's the issue. So we need to look at sex is not that way. Sex is enjoyable. Okay, to be slim. Mamma, dear, coyin. No shiny in the camera, mamma. And yes, I went in. This word that you came, you you got you, you are not enjoying sex. You got it married. And, and you also have financial issue. What is this thing? At least if you're enjoying sex, you have financial issue, cry, don't care. Now, if you have these both problems, please test trouble. Okay. So you have financial, you don't have financial issue, you're not enjoying sex, you are not you won't be happy. Let me tell you the truth. Always you feel like somebody is doing something to you. Meanwhile, there's nobody. It's your own problem. Okay. God designed that for realization of the body. It's not about it's, it's a pure realization for both partners. Okay. Good. So let me continue my journey. Since uh we are still in the mail, I said today we'll be looking at um we're looking at uh the journey, the accessory glance, and then we look at semen. And how semen is produced. What we did initially is how sperm is produced from the semiferous tubule to the epithelium is a sperm. Now, when it reaches the accessory glands, it becomes semen. So there's a different aspect. Sperm and semen are different. From the testis going is sperm. When they reach the accessory glands going, they become semen. Okay, then we look at also uh, semen analysis. How to Evaluate the power within the semen, the morphology, the everything. We're going to look at the semen analysis. Okay. Then from there, we can start an introduction to female reproductive system. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to end male today and then possibly introduce you to female. You are the most complex entity, females. So we do the simple one and then we go to the complex one. After all, we're going to need the same knowledge. Okay. But let me ask you two questions before I start. Last time when we were talking, we said LH and FSH affect sperm production. LH and FSH affirm, affect sperm production. Now, can you tell me exactly? LH, low LH in a man, what will happen? And low FSH in a man, what will happen? These are my two questions. Please write those questions down and then look for the answers. Okay. But who can try? Low LH in a man, what would it happen? If a man gets low LH, what's going to happen? If a man gets low FSH, what's going to happen? Yes? Anybody to try? Low FSH and low LH in a man, what is going to happen? Agatha. Yes, yes, sir. Sir, I'm talking about go the on. FSH. FSH, okay, go on. The last time you said the SFH is in the sertraline cells. And if it is low, it, it affects the, the functioning of the production of the uh, sperms. So it will indirectly cause um, infertility in males. Agatha, you've cut it too short. You had the way. You said it affects the cellulite cell. So how is it going to affect sperm production? Sperm is produced by spermatogonia cells. So how is it going to affect it? Uh -huh. um, so that's what I You're on the that. path. You're on the, you're on the right way. So finish it well. Uh -huh. No, can anyone no, finish it well? So you want somebody uh, to help? Yes. Okay. Who is helping her? Just feed. Do you want to help? Yes, sir. Yes, go on. Um, when, 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 when both are, 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 are low, it can lead to a low spend count, which can bring about a in the middle. Ah, wait to. 
Just me, what are you talking about? When the uh, uh, LH and then the FH are both low. FSH, yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, and the LH are low in the main. No, talk about one, please. Okay. So when, when it is that low, I was talking about FSH. The, F, mm -hmm. the FSH. When it is low, it can bring about a low sperm count. How? That's the question is how? 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 How is going to do Let that? Let me take a comeback. <laughs> okay, go on. Let me take a comeback. Okay, okay, good. Cynthia, Cynthia, no. You want to take that question? Cynthia. Cynthia? Okay, I think Cynthia. Once it's up, she's not getting in. Jacqueline. Jacqueline. Hello, sir. Yes, Jacqueline. Do you want to take Hello. that question? Yes, like what Agatha was saying. The last time you talked about the cetoli cell, you said that that's uh it nourishes the spans. So if the SF uh the uh, FSH, FSH, F, FS, that is uh, follicular stimulating hormones. So, if the cetonal cell is not, uh, the sperm is not well fed, what do I say? It? It's not well nourished, meaning then the sperm production will also be low. And because of that, it will affect the fertility of the man. Okay, okay. Now, Jacqueline has made an important point here. But is that all what's going to happen? It he said that it's not going to be fed well. So automatically the sperm will not be the sperm production will be affected. Is that all? FSH. Is that all? There's more to it. Uh Joanna, Amisa, Joanna. Oh, sir, please, she has said my So, please, I was coming to say that um, the cytolic oh. cell, it protects the, the one that produces the cell. So, if the SFH is going to affect it, then it means it can protect it and it can feed it. And if it can nourish and then protect it, there will definitely going to be a problem with where it's being produced. And so, therefore, there will be a low stem count or the stem that will be produced within the now. Thank you. Okay, good. There's one other point that you've not mentioned. There's one other point that is not mentioned. Okay, let's look at it. So these are how the questions should be with exams. A man with a low FSH, which of the following conditions can happen? Then A, B, C. Okay. So you've mentioned, let's see somebody else. Okay. Um Jane, Nana Ando. Jane? Yes, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. Sir, please, uh, we, the follicle stimulating hormones control the function of the cytomel cells. So uh, a low level of it will destroy the blood testes barrier of the mm. cytomel cells. And when it's being destroyed, uh, uh, sperm cells are being exposed to foreign materials. And, and this can lead to a low sperm count or infertility. And actually, when the TBA, TBD, tested, uh, blood barrier is broken, it's not no sperm count. Okay? It's not no sperm count. And it's not going to be, as, it will be affected by the person's own immune system, autoimmune. Okay. And it's going to lead to a spermtozoa, a spermtozoa, no sperm cell. So it's not no sperm count. That, that is serious. It's going to be affected. It's going to break the barrier and eventually will lead to a spermatozoa, no sperm cell. No, not low. Okay? So you should be able to understand the importance of FSH in a man. What about LH? 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 Sahada? Sahada? LH? That was the, this thing I was coming to talk about, the FSH. Oh, Mr. Hada, we've talked. So go early check. It doesn't matter. 
<laughs> oh, it matters. <laughs> so, so how that no, work? no production of that one too will decrease the listen, the spam viability, the production of the spam viability. So therefore, they hey. will lose them down. Hey, Sahada, you are not prepared. Go and, go and back, come back. <laughs> okay, sir. <laughs> this is said you go and come back. You are not prepared. Okay. Okay, okay good. Good. Can someone take the LH? AC. Say. AC. Type mute. Mm -hmm. uh, it will affect uh, the production of testosterone. So it will cause low production of um, testosterone. Since the LH helps to Stimulates the production of testosterone. Thank you. By right. so it will affect which one and which one will produce that hormone. Is it come again? Sir. Mm -hmm. It will affect the uh, you mix the, the cell. The Leydig cells. Uh -huh. The Leydig cell. Okay. Good. Yes. And then uh -huh. that and uh, that one. Uh, causes the testes to produce the testosterone. Okay, okay. So eventually, it means that it's going to affect hormone production. And when somebody's testosterone is low, what's going to happen? Will it affect sperm production? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is it great? How? How? What's the function? Can you check check for yourself? What's the function of that hormone in men? Say, please, low libido. So, low libido. So, the person will have no affinity for sex. So, the sperm can be all right. But he won't even have sex. He don't want to even have sex. Okay? So, that is why, for fertility reason, we check that hormone in men. Because if it's very low, let's say, Kwano Kurano, they can't know about, okay? And erectile you're going dysfunction. To get no erectile dysfunction, yes. Okay, so it's not always about sperm production, ladies and gentlemen. It's not always about sperm production. But the issue that help in sex as an entity will be affected. So that hormones gives you libido and everything for you to stand. As a man, when you see something, is kept moving. Something moving you have to look but that guy you can be naked he won't even look at you the libido is not there he doesn't even care okay men are a bit jealous or mostly jealous jealous of men 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 a man that's jealous is serious thing okay men we are very jealous when it comes to that so that hormone in us makes us that way. okay so a man that the wife goes anywhere coming in and he's just like that actually the hormone is not working so that hormone is not about sperm production. Please get it right. But what goes into sex will be affected. So please get it right. It's not sperm production. It's not anything that ends with sperm production. This guy will not even have affinity for sex. He can't even have perfect erection. Okay? And his manhood, what makes you a man is that hormone. You see, aggress aggressiveness, hair-like, broad chest, and all these things will be gone. So just like a, a, a lady in trial, that's all. Okay. So you understand it perfectly. Don't end everything with that. And that's so when these things are in objectives, you should be able to pick the answer easily. Okay, which of the following? Then you know that oh, if it's FSH, yeah, this is what it goes. If it's LH, it doesn't end with sperm production. It's going to end with things that that hormone do to men. Okay. So please, it's not everything that ends with sperm production. You should put that in mind. Okay. Is anybody who doesn't understand these two things? Anybody who doesn't understand these two things? Yes, sir. Please, can you? Yeah, please come again. Please try this again. I should come again like how? Which one? Like, Is it the FSH or the LH? Sir, please, I can you differentiate it again? Oh, okay. FSH will eventually affect cytolic cell. And cytolic cells, everything with cytolic cell is going to affect the sperm production. Being protection, feeding, 
barrier breaking and everything, okay? LH, on the other hand, effects on the Leydig cell. And Leydig cell does so many things, but what we are interested in is the production of the androgen hormone, which is testosterone. And testosterone has nothing to do with sperm production. However, anything that goes into a manhood, being sexually, sexually active, being uh, erective, being aggressiveness, being in a sexual drive issue, high libido and everything will all be down. So you won't even have affinity for sex to think about ejaculation or sperm production. And then you muscle. Okay? So understand these two aspects. So which of these is serious? Which of these two hormones is serious? If your husband should have one. Hey, if, if, your husband, if your husband is supposed to, if your husband or your boyfriend is supposed to have one of these problems, which one would you want him to have? Is it low LH or low FSH? Low LH. Low FSH. Low FSH. Low FSH. Low FSH means that he can have sex with you, all right? But he can't even the sperm. He can't even fertilize anything. Low LH means that he can't even have erection to have sex. Okay. What do you mean erection? It means none. You don't want a none. None of the above. Uh, it's a water. It's a water. Oh, 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 when your husband comes home and doesn't want to touch you, do you think what is his problem? None of the above. You're already sitting closer. You don't know. So please get to know it and solve it. That's what I'm doing. Mm. You think he's tired? He has worked the whole day, so he's tired. One week, one so more, two weeks, one so more. What's why you're tired? What 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 will be that problem now? What are you So you think. He has a girlfriend. He has no girlfriend anywhere. He himself, the attendant, sorry, or a girlfriend after day. So it's like that. He will try to, ah, let me see. Is there anything wrong with me and my wife? Let me try another lady and see if I'll get erection. So you see the problem. If you don't want to learn, this is what's going to happen to you. He won't get erection with you. So you think there's a problem. And as an African man, he will think spirituality. Meanwhile, it's a hormone that is imbalanced. So you try another lady and see. Let me go and try another lady and see if I'll get erection. Before he's trying, trying, he has tried so many and caused trouble for himself. So when your husband is not touching you, don't be happy. Don't be happy. Go and test nicely, put it nicely and check his hormones. You'll be surprised what is happening. And then let's solve it. And then you get back your husband. So I'm telling you the truth. I know most of you are relating to what I'm saying. So that's a man with a high level of this woman. He will have the affinity. If he's dying, he will do and die. But what do you tell me? I always say, boy, are they? And I'm on Pesex, on the way discipline. I hate discipline. Discipline is a human way. So please, let's get to, uh, let's continue with our letter, okay? So these are two important questions you should know. And as midwife, please, do check those hormones for men. Okay? Do check those hormones for men. So under what condition you won't even need to check somebody's testosterone? If you check FSH and it's low, do you need to check the androgen hormone? If you check LH and it's low, which of these do you don't need to check for testosterone again if it's low? Mm -hmm. Which of these yeah, two hormones? Question, when it's please. low, I'm saying which of these hormones, FSH and LH, FSH and LH, which of these two hormones, when it's low, it indicates that you don't need to check for testosterone again. It means automatically testosterone will be low. Which of these hormones? LH. 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 So when you check people's LH, don't waste their money to check their testosterone again. Okay? People do waste people's money. Check everything because they don't understand what they are doing. Okay, so if you're the the midwife that usually check check everything on the on the sheet, 
for somebody to go and do because the doctors are attacking. If you are taking, understand what you are doing. Okay, good. Now let's continue with our journey. Okay. Uh, give me a minute. Is there a treatment for that? So please, question. Yes. What's the question? So please, is, it, is there a treatment for that? If you check and it's low, the LH and the FS, if you check and yes. it's low, is there a treatment for that? Yes, there's treatment for that. Yes. With men, we have all the treatment available. Okay. There's treatment for all problems of men. There is. Okay. So, if that's your question, there's treatment, okay? There's treatment. So, let's go on. And I'm not going to mention treatment here, please. So, let's go on. Um, let me project the PowerPoint and then... Let me Sir, project please, the PowerPoint. Let's continue. Okay. So, let's continue, okay? What I'm going to do is that, um, let me put, you have the PowerPoint to your end. I'm changing, give me some few minutes. I'm changing my network so that the network I'm using, if I want to project it to, it to be, that's why I'm not projecting. This is good when we are talking about. When I want to project image, it will start to wasting your time. So let me check my network to my power band and then let me do that. Okay, so um, who is my co-host? Celestine. Celestina. Celestina? Yes, sir. So I'm here. Uh, Celestina, pause the recording. Okay. Eh? I'm logging out, changing the network, and I'll join soon. Okay? Yes, I'm sir. Using another network so, that I can, so can you control that? So you can control the recording. Sir, don't worry. Okay, so pause it, and then let me log out to use a network and let me. In, in, the, in the, say, 10, 15 minutes, I should come in back. Okay? Or maybe okay. less than that. The network is just here. Let me see if I can do it right now. Okay. Good. Okay, let's see how we're going to go that. Let's go out first to the network. The accessory and the analysis, okay? And now there's one important that, that we have to talk about. It's called the ejaculatory that. So let's look at this picture and know which one is ejaculatory that. Okay, so this is our testis, the epididymis, the vas different. Okay, and now if you look at the vas different, it passes on top of the urinary bladder and then posterior to the urinary bladder before entering the prostate. Over there, there is a seminal vesicle. Okay? So the seminal vesicle that plus the ejac uh, plus the vas different when they meet. They form the ejaculatory duct. So ejaculatory duct is a very small one over here. That's where we call ejaculatory duct. So ejaculatory duct is not that long, very short. Okay. Sir, please, Even I cannot see. Duct, oh. Please, the screen is shared. So check your settings. Okay. So the ejaculatory duct goes into the prostate, divides the prostate together with the urinary aspect so the urinary prosthetic urethra together with the ejaculatory that divides the prostate to three. One, two, three. Okay. So first we are talking about ejaculatory that uh semen analysis let's understand it so when the sperm swim to this portion this is where the name changes to semen the name changes to semen when the seminal vesicle add something to it then it goes in there the prostate also adds something to it and then they come in here and move out so the name semen is acquired when the sperms enters the ejaculatory duct over there the seminal vesicle will secrete something to it one and then State also secretes something into it. The bobo uterine gland is not part. Let me repeat that. It's 
it is a sensory gland, but it doesn't secrete anything that into the semen. The function of it is to clean the urethra, the pathway. You see, urine is acidic. And into the pineal urethra, the bubonic uterine gland will clean it. So it will secrete a sticky. And then, so when a man gets erection, there is something sticky that comes out first. That is a secretion coming from the carpal gland. It's to clean the urethra of the acidic content and make it slippery so that the semen together with the sperms can easily pass through, okay? So let's look at the content, at the ejaculatory that what is added, what will seminal vesicle add, what will prostate add? And then let's look at the color change of the semen, uh, the color change of the semen as we go along, okay? So let's look at the seminal vesicle, okay? We are interested in what they add. So this is the cross section of the seminal vesicle looking at the posterior side of the prostate, of the, of the urinary bladder. So in the urinary bladder, this is the, uh, the duct. Here, the sperms, you see the ampulla, the vast different ampulla. They, they rest small, and then they join the ejaculatory duct. So this is the seminal vesicle, what we are going to talk about. So from the ejaculatory duct, they enter the prostate and then come out, okay? So let's look at this passage easily. Now we say that the, the seminal vesicle here, please take a, it, it, it adds a yellowish viscous content to the active sperm. So when a sperm swims to the ejaculate that, number one, the secretion coming from the ves, uh, seminal vesicle is yellowish and it's viscous. When you say something is viscous, it's thick, okay? So yellowish viscous added to it. We're saying that actually it gives 70 percent of the semen. So whatever a man ejaculates, 70 percent fluid is coming from the seminal vesicle. What is the color of the secretion of the seminal vesicle? What's the color of the secretion of the seminal vesicle? Yellowish. Yellow. Good. Yellowish. Keep that in your mind. And we say, apart from it being yellow, it's also what? Viscous. Viscous means it's, it's thick. Okay? Now let's go to the prostate. So these are the contents. So it contains fructose, amino acids, sorbent acid. So fructose is a sugar. Okay, so it feeds the sperm cell. Amino acids, vitamin C. Ascorbine and amino, uh, amino acids is the end product of protein to feed them again. Ascorbine is vitamin C, okay? Prostaglandin, something to contract them, to let them move, and an additional sugar to take on. So it gives them food. It gives them something to let them energize them, okay? Now the prostate, okay? The prostate is this structure just beneath the, uh, the urinary bladder, okay? So from the ejaculatory that it enters the prostate. Now we are seeing the prostate on the other hand. So on the other hand, secretes um, let me get the H. Okay. Okay, good. So this is the content. It gives the 30% of the fluid left. Okay. And the color of the secretion of the prostate is what? Whitish. Ah! Now, when you add yellow and white, what color do you get? Oh, yellow and white. What color do you get? Cream color. Cream color. Cream color. Cream. Cream. Cream color. Good. Make me a co-host so that I don't meet me again. When you meet everybody, you meet me also. So make me a host or a co-host so that I don't meet me, okay? Good. So when you add yellow and white, you get cream. So the actual semen color is supposed to be what? Cream, okay? So semen color is supposed to be cream. So when you have a semen color, and look at the content, one by one, it contains still uh, uh, enzymes that are protein in nature. It contains also acid. So we see that the semen, uh, the seminal vesicle already gave them acid in different forms. So here it's going to give them lepers and everything. Then this is the most important, citric acid. Citric acid will be given to liquefy it. So you see, the, C the seminal vesicle gave them something yellowish, something thick, contain a lot of sugar for them to feed. Then when it comes to the prostate, the prostate adds enzymes and acid. 
to make it liquefied so that when they reach the vagina, they can swim. So normal semen, number one, most of the fluid is coming from the seminal vesicle. Number two, it's supposed to be creamy. Number three, it's supposed to be lighter, not thick. Okay? So if somebody ejaculates and then you see the semen to be very yellow and then thick, what do you have in mind? If a man ejaculates and you see semen to be yellowish and thick, what's the problem? There is a problem in yes. the prostate. Thank you. Infection. Thank you very much. Probably. Gonorrhea. Thank you very much. Okay. There is a problem with the prostate. So, so if you expect a man after traveling for a long time to ejaculate and it's supposed to be thick, why? Do you want him to have a problem with prostate? The prostate will add acid to make the thing lighter. Okay, so men with problem with the prostate will have so men prostate problem they don't even know, but the semen color and then uh, status should be able to tell you that the man has a problem. Okay, so if a man also ejaculates and it's very white or whitish and very thin or very it's not sticky at all, very like watery, what's the problem? Can we say that the prostate is the over, like the prostate gland is overworking, so producing more acid, making it the semen more lighter? Mm, well, well. Yeah, there can also be a problem at the uh, seminal vesicle. Blockage of the seminal vesicle. Okay, look at where the seminal vesicle is. It's located at the posterior side of the bladder. So any problem with the bladder will affect it. Okay, so yes, those men will give very whitish and very not sticky uh, type of semen. So proper semen, ladies have time and look at it too. Have time. It's supposed to be creamy, it should be, should be sticky. Okay, sticky nature. That's how it's and then it should be supposed to be many because 70% of the fluid is coming from the seminal vesicle. And then 30% is coming from the prostate. Remember, the bulbouterine gland doesn't contain much. Okay. So here we are saying number one, the prostatic secretion serves to liquefy the coagulant semen. Semen liquefied after its deposition into the female genital tract. So when it gets in there, it should be, be liquefied so that it can be able to move quickly through the lake of uh, acid. Okay? So that is the important aspect. So you can have your seminal vesicles, uh, you, you can have your seminiferous tubule or the, the spatogonia cell producing enough sperm cells, very good ones. But if you have a problem with your seminal vesicle and your prostate, it's going to affect the semen aspect. Okay, so the gland here, number one, we say that it produces something viscous and slippery that is uh, secreted from the prostatic membrane and uh, the, the uh, membranous urethra region, and then it lubricates the urethra before semen is released. So, please, those sticky things that comes when man gets erection, they not contain sperms. I'm repeating, they do not contain sperm cells. The secretions that comes when a man gets erection do not contain sperm cells. I'm repeating that. Okay. I've got an instance people will tell you that sarstic in your manner, and then, then, then it doesn't contain sperm cells. Sperm cell to pregnant a lady should be at least 20 million. It's not just one. One will not do anything. So that sticky thing does not contain sperm cell to pregnant a woman. Okay. So the midwife, you should be away and then stop those things that you usually say. Okay, so this is the bulbouterine gland. It secretes something slippery to clean this passage before the semen comes out, okay? So it also contains galatose, uh, uh, metapentose, they are sugars. That's why it's a base, to clean the acidic aspect of the urine so that it comes out, okay? Now let's quickly look at the sperm. This is the normal shape of a sperm. Number one, it should have a head, a mid side and a long tail, a long tail to be able to swim. 
a long tail to be able to swim. One tail, not two. And then the mid part of the mid part of area contain mitochondria, which is the powerhouse. So this is where the energy is. So this powerhouse will give energy to the tail, and the tail will propel and then swim the head forward. The genetic material is here. This is where the DNA now produce you or anybody is here. Now this is the engine room, the mid part, power area. And then this is the wheel to move, the swim. And then this contains the genetic material. Now at each part, we have the acrosome. This needs to be incapacitated to be able to uh, undergo fertilization. We're going to look at it during, but remember there's a covering at the head of the sperm that we call acrosome, okay? The membrane. And then we have the genetic material. So this is a front view and this is a side view of the sperm. So under the electronic microscope, this is how the sperm will look like. Okay, so this is the midpoint, a big head region, together with the cell membrane, acrosomal cell membrane, and then a long tail to swim. Now, these are the, the sperm ana semen analysis. Let's understand this carefully in semen analysis. Number one, a normal sperm count for a single ejaculation in, is approximately 50 to 100 million sperm cells. Now, look at the unit. Spermatozoa per meal. Spermatozoa per meal. Please take note of that. Spermatozoa per meal. Okay? So we're saying that in a single ejaculate, a man should be able to release this amount of sperm cells per meal. We are saying per meal. Now, individual with sperm count of less than 20 million spermatozoa per meal of ejaculate is considered what, to be what? Terror. So when a man... Secret less than 20 million per ejaculate. Uh, there's a problem. It's considered that he can't impregnate anybody. Why? Because we need a lot to be to be sacrificed in the vagina because the vagina is acidic. So we need a lot to die. So that neutralize the content of the acidic, and then the others can swim past into the um the uterus. Okay. Now the last two points. It is estimated that 20% of the sperm cell in ejaculate are morphological abnormal. It means that if you if you are able to release, let's say, 50 to 100 million, we assume that 20% of it is not accurate. The shape is, is morphologically wrong. Their head may be bad, their midpiece may be bad, or their tail may be bad. So if you take 20% out of 50, what is left? Can you impregnate somebody? So anytime you get morphological abnormality, more than 20%, it means the person has a problem. He can impregnate somebody. I'm repeating. If you get morphological abnormality of a sperm, more than 20%, we take it out of the count. So if the person ejaculates 22%, 22 million sperm cells, and we are saying we have 25% or 30% Morphological abnormal. When you take it out, the others cannot impregnate people. So you should not always concentrate on the sperm count. That's why a lot of clinicians do. They look at the sperm count. Oh, oh, that, this guy has 22 million. Oh, he has 40 million. He has this, so he can pregnant. No. Consider the morphology. Normally, out of the 20, whatever, 50 to 100 million, we have 20% that is not good. And we say that is normal. So anytime morphological abnormality goes beyond 20%, it means that most of the sperm that are there, though they are part of the count, they are not good. They can't do anything. Now, the last point we're saying that immortality, immort immortal, immortal means they can't move. Some of them can't move. And we say when you record more than 25% of your sperm cell can't move, you can impregnate people. So ladies, what are the factors? The count is one factor. The morphological abnormality is another factor, and then immortal inability to move is another factor. So we don't look at a male sperm count only and conclude, oh, the sperm cells and endosome, they're just ultimate name, make sure they are morphological abnormality. You should not record more than 20%. If you record more than 20%, the same problem. You can't impregnate anybody. Those sperm that can't move. Should not be able to record, you should not record more than 25%. If you record more than 25%, it means that though he, he can have 30 million sperm cells, maybe 40% are not moving. So virtually the count is low. Okay. So please understand these parameters. It's not always about the count. 
it is not always about the count. It is also about the morphological. So there's, a, there's percentage interest. Morphological abnormality should not be more than 20%. Those who can't move should not be more than 25%. So there are three factors we look. Now, these are morphological factors. We have physiological factors. Number one, the sperm pH is a base. So when the semen give a pH of acidic, which is seven and below, it means already his sperm cells are dead. Record those ones, please. It's not the PowerPoint. Record it. pH should be base. In other words, the pH should be more than seven. If it's seven, is water. That means the person giving out water. So it should be more than seven. The pH should be more than seven. And then the time for ejaculating. You see, the time you ejaculate and the time it comes to the lab should not be more than one hour. So if it's recorded at the, the time the guy ejaculated and the time he came to the lab is three hours, it means that the sperm cells are already dead. It should not be more than one hour. Liquefaction. We know that should be liquefied. So when a person ejaculates and it's not liquefied enough, it means automatically. Then the volume. The volume depends on the lab. My average it should be more than two males. When you ejaculate, you should be able to record more than two males. Anything less than two males means that you don't produce enough sperm cells or enough semen. Enough semen can be a problem from the seminal vesicle or the prostate. Okay? So these are the other factors we consider. The time it came to the lab is more than one hour. They are dead, so the count is nullified. The pH, the liquefaction, and then also the um, um, the volume. The volume should be two mils and above. And then there is abstinence. For a man to be able to abstain and get the normal sperm count, we should be able to abstain at least at least seventy three. 72 hours, three days before taking the, the count. So if a man that you see that abstinence is one day before the count, there's a problem. It's going to affect the count. So you have to let him go and come. Okay. So a man should be able to abstain three days before taking the count. So, so if the abstinence is one day or two, it will affect the count. Okay. So abstinence, the pH, the liquefaction factor, the volume needs to be considered. Before you come to the clinical related, uh, come, come come test, which are the sperm counts, you, you put the morphological the abnormality, and the immortal aspect of the sperm. Okay. So please take note of these very important factors. So we have physical factors and then morphological or clinical factors. The physical factors are the pH, the volume, the abstainers, the time it came to the lab and everything. We need to consider it. And these are the factors I've given you, okay? You have to abstain three days. If it's less, it's going to affect the count. You have to get a volume, two and above. Okay, so each, each, each lab has its own range. So you should check the range. Always the range you'll be given. If the range is not given, you take the absolute values, the one I've given, okay? So this is the normal count. We're going to see a lot in there. Low sperm count, you are going to see few here. Now, these are the anomalies. Now, look at normal. This is the normal shape. AP view, anterior view. Now, we have people that their sperm has a big head. This one, you can't go anywhere. The head will not, not let him go. Others have very small head, micro sperm. Others have double-headed. Others have double body. Others have long head, rough head, and abnormal middle piece. Now, from the germ to the abdominal middle piece, any of these sperm cells cannot impregnate anybody. And these are the, some of the morphological problems. So we say morphological adaptation. They will tell you that we have a lot of double head, lot of body, double body. This, these are all not good. So the morphology of the sperm cell counts. It's very important. The physical parameters are also very good. However, the morphology is important. You should understand the morphological. So we are saying that semen secretes is alkaline in nature. It helps neutralize the environment of the erythroides. It contains prostaglandin. Which give them what, what? Which gland gives prostaglandin? Seminal vesicle to make sure that the sperm move quickly and they're able to move straight from the men to the female tract. Okay. So a good sperm will help us to undergo fertilization. 
Now I have this on my screen. What do, what do you have on your screen? Banana. Banana. We are going to talk about what? I have two. So we're going to talk about what? Right. I could let you come banana. The penis. So why do you think I use banana to talk about the penis? Why? Self-fertilization. A healthy one. Because look at me. So why do I use banana? Not kakumba and anything. I use banana. Why? Banana has the shape of a penis. That is why. Because it has peels. <laughs> and it's it peeling. Has it has what? The peels. It's what? It, it, it has a peel as a coat. Mm. It can be used but as a penis. It has a peel. It has a peel. It has a skin. It has a skin. It has a skin. Okay. This energy. It's like an erected penis. So that's why I use banana. Hey. It does what? Uh, it contains uh, a lot of uh, nutrients like potassium that helps to. It's 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 the color mm. too, I think the color. <laughs> it is believed that is white. some people hey. call the uh, the penis nike mukwedu. Kwedu is a banana, so I think that's why you use the banana. Yeah, it's for study purpose. <laughs> Sir, please, it, yeah, is, it is believed that those who take enough yeah, banana is help them. To impregnate women. They have what? Because of the nutrient in mm. the banana. I read it. Hey, yo. I read it some days ago. That's good. What is in banana? What's the basic component of banana? Potassium. Potassium. Yes, no, potassium. potassium. Now, let me explain to you straightforward. Before you, you you agitate a lot. Banana, excluding people with uh, CCF right, men with CCF right. I hope you understand CCF right. No, no, sir. no. Sir. CCF. Yes, what's the meaning? CCF. Congressive heart failure. Hmm? Uh, congestive uh, cardiac failure. In other words, people with hypertension, but they have CCF right. A typical problem with them is that they can have their foot, okay? They can have pitting edema of their foot. Okay. So men who have hypertension and then have these pitting edema, coconut and banana is not good for them. If you have a husband who has hypertension, but walks to work and then you come with a foot, a bit swollen or pitting, it didn't matter. Banana, coconut are not good for him. If you give him that, you are killing him slowly. Apart from this man, banana contains something that gives erection. So if your I husband or your boyfriend has no not, has no CCF right, better give him banana okay. once a day. Yes, two pills. Uh, two, two of these once a day. Okay. So that's the reason why I use banana. So apart from these people with those problems, banana is good for men. It contains something. It's not potassium. Go and read on it. it contains something that gives very good direction for men. Okay. But remember, it's not all men. No, don't go and kill somebody you because you want direction. I'm not eating banana. I'm eating grapes. They are eating banana already. Oh, I, me, me, I don't take banana. 
So you know why I don't take banana now? Hmm? Sir, please ask a question. Why has your wife believed that? Yes, what's your question? And uh, sir, please, I want to ask whether the cowper's gland always secretes its um, secretion uh, uh, after erection. After erection. It means that when the penis is erecting, the cowper gland secretion will come. It's not always even reaction. Any erected in a pranaba. So at times they'll come and you won't see. Oh, okay. okay. When the sensitivity that the sperm cells are moving, then the cowpea gland will start cleaning. So it's not at times not even erected. Now it clean maybe. Right. A cleaner. Hello, say. Okay. Say. Yes. This is the banana. It contains yes, go on, my dear. Bro bromelain. That helps to increase the testosterone level. Mm -hmm. Google, Google. Hey, Google girls, Google girls, Google girls. <laughs> she has Google all right now. Google girl. Yes. In other words, banana is good. It gives you erection. So don't go and kill somebody because you want erected penis. Check the man's status before you give him banana. Don't go and kill people. <laughs> Please, what you say about the edematous, those those don't take a banana, <laughs> the men. I want to know if it's only the hey, men or women are also involved. Oh no. Men, new men, they can take banana. Right? It won't do anything to your libido. Right? It won't do anything to your blood pressure. Right. Sir, please. Women are afraid of me. Mm. Hello, please. Um, so oh, let me talk about this. Means, yes, go on. Does that mean um, men shouldn't take banana at all? No. Men, banana is good for them. I'm saying men with that particular problem. Oh, okay. It's not only banana they shouldn't take. They shouldn't take anything in the Sapian, uh, in the Musa family. Okay, if you oh. remember your Greek, Musa and yeah, the banana, the plantain, and everything, they shouldn't take it. Oh, mm. Okay, uh, okay, thank you, sir. So it's not only if, yeah. if your husband has hypertension, if he has hypertension, do you know what type of hypertension the person has? Some people are not even hypertensive, but it's in their family. Me, it's in my family, so I'm not, I'm not wasting my time on banana. Oh, okay. I want to have hypertensive women. Men can eat banana. Well, they can take it, please. This one is for erection problem. Mm -hmm. It's not that it's not good for, but it's going for men who have that is going to affect them. So it's not about erection. Mm -hmm. Or in the family more. Well, let's go to the penis and finish it. Number one, the penis is not a vital organ. So it means a man can live without a penis. If you cut a man's penis, he won't die. Okay? Doesn't mean when cut it too. The way I'm saying are you it, before you know, life? people are cutting penis. Mm -hmm. You won't enjoy life. You will not enjoy life. You get another way to enjoy life. Yeah, but why is that when you pull a man penis, the, the man will collapse? Hey, you are talking about the scrotal sac. When you this testes contain the vital organ, if you pull it, everything, every reaction will come. Hey, what are you for, sir? Hey. Mm. The penis and the, the scrotal sac or the, the testes is a weak part of a man. Last time I told you that no matter what, don't don't go there and touch any man's scrotal sac or the, the testes. Please, no matter what, don't do that. It's suicide. You are a killer if you do that. Okay, let's go. 
Now, the penis is no vital organ. It means that we can take the penis. Yes, what is it? I should carry. Okay. It means we can... Well, you can take the penis out and there will be nothing left. However, the man cannot die. So, number one, the penis is... Now, let me explain it straightforward because of time. Let me go here. Now, look at the cross section. This is a cross section of somebody's penis. Mm -hmm. If you cut through a man's penis, you see this. Let me get this picture first. So, this is the penis, okay? If I cut through, this is what I will see. I will see three bodies. So, corpus means body. Couple one, couple two, couple three, okay? The one and two here, they are like, they are the erector tissues. We call them cavernosum. So corpus cavernosum. The one below here is called spongiosum. It's the one that contains the erythra. So spongiosum contains the erythra. Each of these body is enclosed by a thick membrane that we call the tunica. So the tunica abuginia is not only to the scrotal sac. It comes to the penis. We say abuginia is thick, very strong, okay? So always... And cover things. So the abuginia is there, covering it. Okay. Then inside there, the body, the cavernosum, they are special erector tissues. They are type of connective tissue. That uh, they have inside arteries. Let's get a picture one. Okay, here. They have arteries inside. Let me go back. Okay. So they have artery inside like this. The arteries will pump blood to fill the penis. When the erector tissues are filled, when these erector tissues are filled, they engulf it, hence give erection. So arteries, capillaries in the penis, we call them deep arteries. We call these ones deep arteries. Okay, so erection does not happen to the spongiosum. Erection happens to the cavernosum. I'm taking that. Erection does not happen to the spongiosum. It happens to the cavernosum when the deep arteries fill the special erector tissues. Now, how does it drain? It drains by these circles of veins. This ones. So cross section we have veins on the penis. Yes, capillaries in the penis or in the cavernosum are called deep arteries. Okay? So they fill the cavernous tissue and they get erection. Now, if you examine the penis of a man, you can see blood vessels on it. These blood vessels are all veins. I'm repeating. Blood vessels you see on or on the penis are all veins. The most common one the superficial does have it. When a man gets erection, you see that line on it, take one. Okay? And then believe it, you see another one, take vein. Okay? This vein, together with the circumflex vein, help drainage. They help drain the vein. So the arteries will fill the capillary body and the veins will drain it. Now, erection dysfunction. Let's look at the erectile dysfunction here. There are three aspects of erectile dysfunction. Number one, all these things will happen under the influence of nerves, okay? So these arteries, that are, we call the Helen arteries, okay? They dilate and pump more blood into the erectile tissue to cause erection. We call them, they are small, small arteries, capillaries, but specifically we call the Helen Sen arteries, okay? They go and meet with a vein. When, whenever artery meet with a vein, we say they form Atrovenous something or anasmosis it means that arteries are meeting with veins. So along the line, whatever blood that is in the penis can pass through the vein and go out. Okay. Now, when people cannot pump enough blood into the erectile tissue, they can have erection. And then, if you want to retain erection, it is not a problem of artery. To retain an erection is not a problem of the artery. It should be a problem of the vein. When the blood fills the capillary's body, the vein is supposed to undergo constriction. The vein is supposed to undergo constriction. It's just a vein, a more. 
so that the venous drainage cannot happen. Hence, there will be erectile tissues or erection for a long time. For a man to sustain erection for a long time, this is what happens. The arteries will fill the bodies and then the veins need to undergo vasoconstriction. So medication for sexual dysfunction should act on the vein, not the artery. Now, this is one of the reasons that a lot of men are dying in the hotels now. Most of the medication they take act on the heart and the arteries, pumping more blood to the erectile tissue and then the vein is draining. It's like going to fetch water with, an, with a bucket that is, uh, that is perforated. Okay. So we're going to search blood with a bucket that is perforated or like a, a sieve bucket. Whatever water is in it will drain out. Okay. So that is the same problem we are facing here. It should be able to maintain. Erection for a long time. It is the vein that is going to go back so that to open and then they have to pump higher. If the person in why men, a lot of men are dying in their hotels are that they take down the heart and the arteries. Hence, asking the heart. 